Hey y'all, I'm Shayna and I'm back with another review. This is for Love and Hip Hop Family Reunion Season 3, Episode 5. And we're just going to go back right into it and pick up where we left off. Before we do, if you've been here before and you enjoy this video or you like my content, don't hesitate to subscribe and help your girl grow her channel. Okay, so we pick up with Spice who had to leave her charity event early. We know the crowd was getting real rowdy last week. Um, and she just feels terrible because she has all these vouchers that she wants to give to these single mothers for their children so they can get all the supplies they need for back to school. But it was just, security was like, no, it's dangerous. Like, it's, the crowd is just kind of getting a little restless. So um, she felt upset because everybody was just impatient, waiting, and they waited all the time. And they didn't get anything and she just has these vouchers so she's planning she said later in the episode like she wants to give and pass them out to schools and doctor's offices or wherever spread them around Kingston to make sure that the people who need them get them and I thought that was very nice I know she was really passionate about this like she was thinking about not even doing it next year because of the outcome but she just got to keep trying and keep going so everyone else is um, having fun. They're playing soccer and Mariah Lynn and her broke nails apologized to Amada La Negra uh, about inviting Shay because she didn't realize when she invited Shay that MJ was a part of that. That was a package deal. She didn't know and she didn't realize they still had a little tension and some beef. So she apologized. Amada was fine with it because, you know, <clears throat> her and MJ kind of made up anyway. Chrissy was venting to Tierra Marie and KK about Mama Jones as Mama Jones arrives. And, you know, you can see them. It's like the tension is thick. You can cut it with a knife. And she's just like venting to them like, look, it's been a rocky road up and down for these 18 years. And I just never want to be <laughs> a Mama Jones. Like having a son, being a single mother of a son, it's like you get protective. But we... <sighs> I need my single mother's boy moms to break the shackles of like treating your son like he's your man. Like he's supposed to grow and go do his own thing and live his own life. So Chrissy says she promised Jimmy she would talk to his mother. And my son's name is Jimmy. That is his name. And he has a YouTube channel. Just FYI. Check him out. It's Jim, J-I-M underscore Slim, S-L-I-M help him out with his YouTube channel, check out his content and subscribe if you enjoy. Anyway, so Chrissy and Mama Jones finally talk and they kind of go down memory lane of where it all started. They used to be cool. They used to get along um, in the beginning and you know, now they're not. They're at this place and they've been here for a while. And Chrissy said that her mother had passed like right when she started dating Jim Jones. So she thought that Mama Jones is going to be like a mother figure to her, which is funny because she's a little older than Jim Jones, but it's like she thought that she would step in and fill that like motherly void, that role for her. Um, and Nancy said like, look, she didn't know how to deal with it. She lost her own mother. Like she didn't really know. And Chrissy's like, you know how it felt. I feel like that should be all the more reason for y'all to connect. But Mama Jones does not know how to deal with emotions. She doesn't know how to handle them. She doesn't know how to deal with emotions. And when somebody just doesn't know how to deal with emotions, they were raised off survival and not love. <laughs> it's hard for them to give something that they just might not even, even received. So... But they make up. They say they love each other. They're both very stubborn women. I'm glad that I've never like dated anyone or been with anyone and the mothers were this way because I don't know how I would handle it. Like that's just a lot. Like embrace, you know, if, if the woman's your son's in love and she's a good woman, like I feel like embrace her and, and, and look at her as a daughter instead of like an enemy. So... <clears throat> You know, they said there's no more tension between them, and that's good. Amada and MJ have a combo. You know, they kind of hug it out and let bygones be bygones. And from their conversation, to me, it's looking like they still may have some lingering feelings for each other, if you ask me. But tonight, it's Tia Marie's night, and she's having a bonfire. She said bonfires are big in Cali, like that's what they do over there. So she thought it was a perfect night for her to have a bonfire and perform. She says it's been almost 10 years. 
So she's, you know, a little nervous. Thinking this is like, all right, you kind of break it back into it when like a small group setting. Just to kind of get your feet wet and who knows? Let's put her in a millennial tour. Add her to something. Let her let this woman make a comeback. So she kind of shows up, bringing the mess per usual. She's messy. And here perform sponsor with hype man chaotic in the back. I love his personality and his energy. She was explaining to sponsor and how it just was getting on this backlash back then when it came out. Like now, the girls can talk about using the men and and all that stuff, but not then. And you know, she was saying how it was such a big hit. I personally never really liked sponsor. Like I didn't like that song, but she has other hits. She has other hits. Phone booth. How to make a girl feel. She got other songs. So for me, like sponsor, I didn't really I feel like that was like the demise of her career when that song came out. So MJ performs for and he shouts out Amada like afterwards and he sounds really good. But KK was like, you know he sound good, but these top hats must go. And I agree. I know it's like a signature thing, but let it go. So she kind of asked Chrissy if Tiara had paid 50 cent because we know they were in a lawsuit and she owed him money. And it's just, girl, I'm shaking my head. Like, she's clearly paid to just be messy. Like they said on 11 Hip Hop Atlanta reunion, if y'all watched that video or the review I did for that, um, she don't have no storyline. She doesn't talk about her business. She's just there to be messy and that's it. And it's like, we have Carly already. We don't need Shekinah there too. It's like too much. So we see Jen, and she said everyone calls her and Fresher couple goals. Who said that? <laughs> Shout out to Portia Williams. Who said that? Who? Who? Who is calling y'all couple goals? We know y'all been together for a long time, and y'all a little stagnant in a relationship because she keeps making it known, but come on. She said they've been engaged for about 16 years. How? And when did he actually propose to you with the ring that you're wearing? She said they were young, they had a kid, and he was like, oh, you know, you're going to be my wife, whatever. And she's just tired of playing house. Honey, you ain't going to leave. If you're not going to leave, and he knows you're not going to leave, then you will be playing house. I'll go over there and ask Chrissy about it. She know. So Tierra is sitting down with Shekinah, and I forgot who else. And she's um, explaining why she has to pay 50 cent after losing that lawsuit. And she was like, look, he'll get it when I got it. <laughs> And I know that's right. I don't like 50 Cent. And it's like, he's a cancer like me, but mm -mm. I don't see it for him. Not a fan. So she kind of fake self was like, oh, maybe she can help me out with my lawsuit. And I'm just being nosy. Like, I feel like it was just innocent and harmless. No, you were starting mess. The way you kicked it off to Chrissy was not how you saying it when you in Tierra's face. Because she always talking about I can't fight this and that. Yeah, but like, at least stand on what you said. If you're going to be messy like that, be messy like that. Don't try to backslide when you're in front of the person. So... She kind of was saying her, her issue with Lyrica. Because earlier, Lyrica tried to shake her hand. And she like you know, rejected and refused. And she just shaded her and shunned her off. And she was saying, like, one, <laughs> she she doesn't understand why Lyrica unfollowed her. She said, like, look, Lyrica asked me to, um, she hit me up in my DM asking me if I could post her song. And I did. And then I see she unfollowed me. Two, she was like, you know how you click on somebody's Instagram and it says follow back? And I'm like, okay, well, why would it say follow back? Like, why would she unfollow me? And Sierra says in her confessional, like, girl, that means you're not following her. And I'm like, I know she kind of know better than that. Like, honey, you are not, like, elderly or something. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> it's self-explanatory. You need to follow back. Like, anyway, she just want to have an issue. Just want to have an issue. And she, like, feeling the way because she, like... Uh, you know, you you unfollow me. No, she didn't. And then wanted to shake my hand like you don't know me. She doesn't know you in real life, Shekinah. She just talked to you real brief online, but she don't know you. That's I don't understand. Like for a period of time, I was doing like online dating years ago, and a guy would you know talk to me in the inbox and be like, "Oh, nice to meet you." And it's like we haven't met. When we meet, that's when you say nice to meet you. Otherwise, we're just too. <laughs> you can be anybody behind the screen. <laughs> anyway, so Jen asked for her about a wedding date later that night in their room. 
And he said he wants to go to City Hall. And she like, stop talking about that City Hall. I want a big wedding. And I, I, I understand after all these years together, they've been together almost two decades. She wants the wedding she feels she deserves. Refresher's like, look, she ain't worked in years. I'm the provider. And it just doesn't make sense to spend. You want a quarter million dollar wedding. It just doesn't make sense to do that. Like, we could just go to City Hall. She started talking about he broke and that's broke mentality. No, that's how you stay in the struggle with that mentality. I understand if you, at this point, if you really want to marry the man, it doesn't have to be city hall though. Like there needs to be a bit of compromise. Maybe we can get a $10,000 wedding. Maybe we can rent an Airbnb or something. I don't know. Go to Vegas. You have ways where you can elope or have smaller ceremonies where it doesn't cost that much money. Like, um, we know y'all was on one season of Love and Hip Hop that time when nobody was watching, but come on. <laughs> come on. Who are you doing it for? For who? Because at the end of the day, it's really for other people. It's not for y'all. Like, the point is the marriage, not the wedding ceremony. So he like, look, if you don't want to go to City Hall, then you won't be a forever fiance. That's just what it's going to be. And she's talking about, she, um, they broke up for two years. I'm like, two years is a long time. <laughs> and in that time, she felt like, okay, well, I can do it on my own. I can do it by myself. I see after them two years, you went back. Because, honey, <laughs> doing it by yourself is not really where it's at. It really ain't. Unless you're in, like, a, something so toxic where you're like, I need peace of mind. But if he taking care of you, you ain't have to work. You don't want to do it by yourself. That's why you won't leave. And she's like, I'll give it a year. And if we ain't, ain't no wedding planned, then I'm leaving. Now, in the previews for next week, she says two years. And it's like, you keep setting the time back, back, back. You ain't leaving. You ain't going. Go on to City Hall. Book a trip to Vegas. Make a trip out of it. Just do it and, and enjoy the vacation. I don't know. But it doesn't have to be like a quarter million dollar wedding. I understand that. Especially in the midst of inflation. And they saying we coming up on a recession. Even though I think we already in a recession. But that's just my opinion. Otherwise, that was the end of the episode. So let me know what y'all think in the comments. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.